Well, we're now being joined by Mr. Victor Giwa, who is a national coordinator of Advocate for People's Rights. Uh, you're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much, Martha. Can you give us your reading of all that has been happening in the last three years with the um, Islamic movement of Nigeria uh, up until yesterday? I mean, the protests that we have seen up until yesterday. Well, thank you very much. First of all, I would want to also join uh, Mr. Femi for, to you know, express my condolence to, your, to the loss of one of your journalists, the young man who was serving here as a, a youth copper, and to the Nigerian police force and to the members of the Shites. Uh, because, uh, like he said, there is, no, there is no need for us to have such records of death when we are not at war, you know, when we are not, uh, especially in FCT. Um, let me go straight to your, to, to, to your question. The leader of the Shites was arrested on the 14th of December 2015, and he was detained on the 15th of December. And thereafter, of course, because of the uh, clash they had with the uh, members of the Nigerian Army Force, particularly the chief of the current chief of Army staff. Then on the second of uh, on the second of December 2016, uh, their lawyer went to court to ask for the enforcement of the fundamental right under Chapter Five of the 1999 Constitution and under the Avoca Charter on people on human and people's rights, which we call the Bonjou Charter. And the court on the second gave, under, uh, presided over by the then Justice Kola Wale, granted them an order that Elder Jackie and his wife, uh, Naziat, be released on bail, and that the federal government should, within 45 days, uh, provide them with accommodation and uh, provide security, and that uh, within that 45 days, they should be handed over to the Inspector General of Police, who should now summon one of his uh, superintendents to take him to the, a particular place the, for accommodation that they have provided for him and provide him with security within 45 days. And that order was given on the 2nd of December 2016. Today is 2019. We are having that, I mean, we are in July. That is about uh, three years down the line. But there's something I need to emphasize in that order. The court also said that failure of the government to implement that order will now be on, will now be on another course of action, which means that the failure for the government to enforce that order, to obey that order, will lead to another course of action, which means that the Shites can go back to the court to enforce that order as on a course of action. And of course, uh, damages was awarded 25 million and all of that. And the Shites waited, you know, to see how the federal government was going to respond to that. And um, it has been, you know, one movement from justice custody and others. I think the government you know, claimed that they had provided the accommodation and it was where they, only they themselves knew. That was, that was their retort after that, after that um, um, order was given. Uh, the, but the first part is that they should be released on bail then accommodation. I think it's this, you know, you, you need to come to say, we have released him on bail. So the next strong of it will be his accommodation. Either in, the, the, the language of the court was whether, either in Zaria or any part of the northern Nigeria that is befitting, you know, for, of his own choice. And um, this protest continued until um, it got to Abuja. Sometimes you cannot get the date now and all of that. Then incidents of aggression started coming up. Uh, of course, we saw the one that happened sometimes in October 30th, 2018, where they had issue, where they had some altercation with members of Nigerian army somewhere within Kuboa. And some numbers of them were in the killings were recorded. So the question, therefore, you will ask is, why are we here at this point? And let us look at some of the issues. Firstly, protest is a form of expression. It is covered under our you know, fundamental as chapter 34, 39, gives them the right to freedom of expression, freedom of assembly. Article 11 of the Africa Charter on Women's and People's Rights also provides that people shall have freedom of assembly. However, subject to restriction that can be provided by the law, in particular to health, security, and the freedom of others. And what it means, therefore, is that 
when you are going about your protest, when you are going about coming together, expressing yourself, you must also respect the freedom of other persons. I mean, we have persons who are going, you know, doing their you know, normal duties in Abuja. We, we were not the people that are infringing on the rights of the Shites. So Nigerians and residents of Abuja and Nigerians in general should not have their own rights infringed by the persons who are protesting. Now, I, I, I really need to look at this thing. The first part I need to say is that the government has not done well in not obeying the court order. I mean, it is illegal, it is unconstitutional for a government of a state to disobey a federal high court order. And they haven't appealed it. And they have not appealed it. That is one part. And I think it is, it is the managers of this government should know how to handle issues like this. Now, the second part is the, on, on the part of the Shites. Why they have a right to protest? I have been involved in protests. In 2014, during the xenophobic attack, I was the first of all the newspaper where I took some of our members to the street, went to the South African embassy, and we protested. The policemen were there. We've been involved in all forms of protest. But however, you cannot protest and infringe, the, infringe on the right of other Nigerians to the extent that it is now leading to destruction of lives, killing of lives and destruction of government properties. That is not legal. That is not permissible. That is not allowed. That is not provided under the law. And so the third part is how the government is managing this crisis. I need to say this. Why a lot of us will say that, okay, it is wrong for government to disobey court order. We need to emphasize the point that the Shites also have lawyers. When this protest is getting to a, 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 disturbing, a disturbing moment, where cases of death have been recorded, death even for members of the Shites, I think it's also the duty of counsel, because they are in court, to also help, to admonish their members, to say, yes, why you have a right to protest? Why you have a right to say no? Your rights have been infringed upon because the federal government has refused to obey because a, a subsisting court order. However, the way and manner you go about your protest is becoming dangerous to, 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 to the society and is posing a threat. Where are the lawyers to the to, to, where are the lawyers to the shite? In such protest, we need to see the lawyers the lawyers to the shite to come out publicly to say, look. Why we support the fact that you must protest? Why it is within your fundamental right to protest? However, we think that the way and manner you are protesting is going publicly. And I think it would have, you know, go a long way to manage the situation. The third part is how government has handled the issue of protest. This is just a civil protest that have culminated to the death of members of the Shites. A young person from Shannes, a young reporter. Another, that yeah, young man could have been another John Momo. That young man could have been another, you know, uh, who, uh, you know, leaders of Nigeria. We have shot, cut down the lives of a young man because of a simple civil protest in FCT that have not been managed by the state. And we now saw the death of a policeman, the death of a deputy commissioner of police and other junior officers. Not during what period? Not in, in Sambisa Forest. Not in crisis region uh, areas, but in the FCT capital. It tells us that a lot of things are going wrong. The state is not even managing this crisis properly. And I will tell you, I had when uh, Chamberlain posed the question to uh, uh, why uh, to uh, addition about the issue of bullets. As we are talking to, as I'm talking to you right now. There are thousands of persons in protest in Hong Kong. 134,000 protesters are on the, were on the street in protest for the past four months. The police responded. They used tear gas. They used pepper spray. They used rubber bullets. Why are we not using rubber bullets? Why are we not using pepper spray? And the other part, and the most annoying part is that do we need to get to a point 
where the protesters will get into the heart of FCT. Where our intelligence? I was talking to some officers yesterday that where, when are we going to get to a point where you are aware that there is the DSS, there is the NIA, there is the police, police they have their intelligence. You allow these persons which you believe and you have perceived, whether rightly or wrongly, to, the, to be a bit violent in the protest, to have an inroad into the FCT without stopping them at the point where they are gathering. So where is the intelligence? You don't need to start confronting them at the, at the, at the city point. When they start gathering, it is at that point. Look, there was a time, and, and I will give it to the police, there was a time we were going for a protest. I was leading a protest. Early in the morning, I was, early in the morning, about 6.30 to 7, I was trying to be at Eagle Square. I got a call from the then commissioner of police, okay, from one of the police officers, and they said they wanted to see me in FCT police command. And I said, wow. So I quickly rushed because I need to coordinate my members who were protesting. In the next 15 minutes, the policemen were already at the point where we were meeting. That is intelligence. So you don't, we couldn't move. They said, no, we're not going to allow you to move out of this place because we, are, we, we, we have this strong belief that some persons might infiltrate your gathering. Yes, we know you. You are a lawyer. You are a civil rights, you are a civil rights activist. However, you don't have control of the persons who may be part of your members. So what, did, what has the security agency done to meet the gathering of these members? No, they are not 10. They are not 15. They are not 20. They are not 40. They are not 50. Something just happened about a few weeks ago. I was not, I mean, the, in the National Assembly, these same persons, so you, you feel you will allow them to gather, allow them to move until they had the, the point where they got to Eagle Square. I think the, the state did not manage the situation very, very well. And, 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 and I think, firstly, it is mismanagement of the situation. Two, the counsel to shite members, especially the fact that they are in court and that their actions right now is infringing on the... I mean, a lot of public property were destroyed. This app... This belongs to taxpayers' fund. I, I, I have not infringed on the rights of the shite members. Why should some public property be destroyed by shite members? Mm. Oh, you have, you have apportioned blame. All, to, all yes, around. to all parties. To um, the council, shite, shite have lawyers. Their lawyers should come up and tell shite members mm. that, look, why you have a right to protest, why well, I think you should do it publicly. They should come publicly and advise the shite members, especially the fact that they are in court. I'm just wondering, how do you think that we move forward from here? Uh, there are those who are afraid that this sect uh, could become, um, you know, another Boko Haram on our hands. Yes. They are afraid that the manner in which they have been handled, because we, we saw this, it would seem that the, the clash right now is with the police, yes. uh, you know, but civilians are not spared. The, the passers-by yeah. are, are not spared. But how do you think that we can this can be managed moving forward in such a way that, um, you know, we can have peace. Correct. It can be managed. Engagement. Government have various agencies to engage these persons. They are Nigerians. They have a right to be heard. How many times have we... It is because people cannot make money from engaging these people. Are they being seen? Are they being seen or treated as Nigerians? Because you know, there's that big question you asked about live rounds. You don't open fire on, on, on citizens. You only open fire on aggressors. <laughs> Is that how they are being perceived? Well, <laughs> on that point of whether they are Nigerians for the purpose of opening fire, our police have opened fire for so no Nigerians. So... That should not be an issue to determine whether or not uh, they are being perceived as Nigerians. We have seen cases of you know, police shooting on Nigerians even you know, within the less, you know, less provocation. So I think that whether or not they are not Nigerians, they have a right to life. You cannot sniff the life of any person except based on an order of court or when the other person's life is, on, is at risk. So, I think that the best way to manage this crisis is for the government, is for various government agencies. And I, and I kept saying it, the handlers of this government are not doing very well with due respect to them. Because you can engage these people and say, look, yes, your case is coming up on Thursday. 
Oh, we agree. And the, the, the most painful part was that the GCP that died, young professional man, we have had, have had interaction with him, was even according to the news, that he was really pacifying these persons. And we saw three bullets get into his head. I mean, when, when, I don't know when you should have a positive engagement with some of these persons before he gets to the point. So what I'm saying is that the government, through its various agencies, would send any delegate to engage them. They have leaders. Excuse me, let us discuss. I don't think that if they are called to the round table, they say, don't worry, your case is in the court, but please, Give us some time. Government has ways of handling some of these matters. We have seen cases of, I mean, the issue of the militants. Yes, even they can go to the consult to these persons. Government can engage the lawyers to the sides. They have lawyers. They are in court. So you can talk to lawyers, please. And I believe very strongly that if they are lawyers, mm -hmm. government assesses the lawyer and speaks to the lawyers. Please, can you talk to your members mm -hmm. to have some level of restraint? Why we watch what is unveiling? I don't know whether the lawyers have done that, but I think what I'm emphasizing on is that such such interaction should be public. We should see the lawyers of the of, of the shites coming to the public to say, "Look, we are, I'm advising that you should restrain, you should hold on. Let us allow the government to talk. We are talking with the government. We've seen it happen." I am a lawyer. I've, I've done protests. I have led people to protest. I've led people to, to, to various areas. And when we got to a point, the people will call and say, lawyer, we are going to discuss. We are going to listen to your, your grievances. Can you ask your protesters, your members, to go back? And we have had it. So it is not out of place. So the government has ways of, not by telling them that, oh, uh, we have made a statement, they should read in between the lines. We don't, they don't need to read in between any lines. Mm. The government, I think, put out a statement on Sunday saying that that is not... Um, they are, that is, it's no longer on, in the hands of President Buhari, that it's in the hands of the court. You know that their, lawyer, their, um, their leader is also being prosecuted by the Kaduna State Government, government in yes. Kaduna. Yes. Um, how do you think that this is going to pan out at the end of the day? I mean, I don't know. Well, what are your thoughts? I mean, you have already said, you know, the, the lawyers should be spoken to and the lawyers should be speaking to their own people. Correct. But at the end of the day, this is a prosecution. It can go this way, it can go that way. Do you think that there, there will be a, a situation where the state will have to take the matter out of court and see how they can resolve it, uh, maybe through some arbitration or something of the sort? Uh, I'm up, uh, it's, it's, the government knows what to do. The government knows what to do. And we should not, you see, lives are involved. And it's painful that we are playing with lives of people. But do you understand what I'm trying no, to say? No, I'm going there now. Yes. He's been, he's been prosecuted by the Cardinal State Government. At, as at the time the Cardinal State Government took the case to court, they have an Attorney General of the state. The Attorney General of the Federation can interface with the Attorney General of the state in Cardinal to have withdrawn the matter. The Attorney General of, the, of, uh, 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 of Cardinal State can also engage the lawyers to... Uh, um, the shites. The Attorney General of the Federation, as at then, can also engage the Attorney General of, of uh, Cardinal State to look. They know. They know. So they just, there are certain things. They know what to do. And it can be done. It, is, it, has, it has happened. The court, have, the court has various you know, decisions that have said that the Attorney General of the Federation, we, we can, the Attorney General of the State, can through the Attorney General of the Federation interface with issues that are going on the court. Yes, the Attorney General of the Federation or the presidency cannot go and withdraw the case that is prosecuted by the, by the Cardinal State. State. However, the Attorney General, the government of the Federation, can interface with the government of Cardinal State to say, look, hold on on this. Let's, work on, let's look at these issues. Yeah, let's, let's, let's look at what are the underpinning issues so that we, for the purpose of resolving this matter, especially when there's a subsisting court order. Is this something that you would advise? That the matter be withdrawn from court? Not withdrawn. Not withdrawn. Because also, there are members... Look, I want us to put this in perspective. The protest is not justified because Zazaki is detained or the federal government are, dis are disobeying court order. There are other persons who, who are detained and they are not protesting. Uh, Dasuki is there. Dasuki could have organized some persons to be protesting every day. 
We have seen paid protesters. But the fact is that people can also protest on the fact that Adazaki has been released. We can go on the street to say, no, we don't want him to be released. So it is not the fact that he is being held in, in detention or that they don't have a right to protest. It's the fact that the government should be able to, with, within the all circumstances, to know how to engage with all issues. And that is why they are government. You should be able to address that. Okay, on this particular issue, let us toe this line. On this particular issue, let us approach it this way. It's all about thinking. And I don't think it is out of place for government to start thinking on how to address this issue you know, that, we, that, that has led us to the loss of lives and the, the, the worst part of it is the death of a very fine professional officer, the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of operation in FCT Command, which is very, very bad. Well, we hope that government will not just be thinking, that they would act on their thoughts uh, and uh, reassure citizens that, you know, all is well or all will be well in the country. We have to thank you very much for coming up this morning. Thank Mr. Victor so Giwa is a national coordinator, advocate for people's rights, and he's speaking to us here in our Abuja studio.